Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Wednesday, January 5th, 2022, and today we're going to be taking a look at the battleground state of Georgia, a state that is extremely competitive and seems to be on a very similar trajectory as the state of Virginia was over the past two decades, moving and inching forward towards the Democratic Party election year after election year. And I couldn't find a better day to make this video than the one-year anniversary of the Georgia Senate runoff elections, in which the Democratic Party went from having zero United States senators from Georgia to two, taking the 100% total delegation of senators from that state. And the state of Georgia had a pretty significant change just over the past four years. It went from having a consistent presidential election victory for the GOP since 1996, all the way to Joe Biden winning the state over victories for Democrats in North Carolina and Florida that they simply could not have, but were able to find in the state of Georgia. And looking at the Georgia runoff elections, despite the national environment seemingly uh, meant to be against President Biden being the election following the one in which Democrats were able to retain control of the United States House of Representatives, win back control of the White House, and this individual Senate seat, both of them actually would be able to block President Biden from having a trifecta and force bipartisan leadership. But that simply was not the case. Voters came out in droves for the Democratic Party, outperforming and outpacing multiple uh, runoff elections in the past, doing very well in terms of numbers. In fact, the runoff elections experienced higher levels of turnout than some presidential elections. And looking at the state of Georgia, it ultimately resulted in Democrats winning these two Senate seats. Now, the runoff elections might have been a year ago, but there are many other things that need to be discussed beyond the state uh, s recent election in January of 2021. Uh, Georgia has had a pretty strong Republican history. You know, when you look back in years past, Georgia didn't really show at least that many signs back then that it was on the pathway to turn blue. Only in the past 10 years have we seen Georgia make significant steps towards the left. Even as recently in 2016, though, there were large victories for Republicans in some statewide races. Johnny Isaacson, this seat is now currently held by Raphael Warnock. Johnny Isaacson won in 2016 by a margin of 14 percentage points across the state of Georgia as a Republican. Now, keep in mind, just four years later, four years and two months, the Democrats were able to win this exact Senate seat, the exact same one, by two points. That is a 15, 16 point swing relative to where it was just four years prior. Georgia has seen some significant shifts towards the left, and it's time to actually talk about how it's very similar in comparison to what we've seen in the state of Virginia. And it is a huge classification to characterize it as such, because in the 2020 presidential election, Joe Biden won the state of Virginia by 10.1%. He only won Georgia by 0.23%. So if Georgia is to get bluer, that only spells out further bad news for the GOP. And the reason I would say that this actually caught my attention was this tweet that I saw that said definitively that Georgia is undoubtedly the next Virginia. Now, I don't think this is necessarily a hot take. I have agreed with it for a significant period of time following the runoff elections. I just never actually made a video outlining that Georgia is undoubtedly the next Virginia. And seeing the numbers here, I realized that it would be much either easier to explain than simply just putting together two uh, elections, the presidential election and the Senate elections, because there actually is a much bigger trend, which makes sense. It's just I never really spent the time to actually make a video for you guys on it. And in the 2010 governor's race, this is where you started to see the Republican Party peak and then ultimately decline. Uh, two years prior to 2010, Republicans won the state of Georgia by 5.2%. Now, keep in mind, in this presidential election, Barack Obama won 365 electoral votes, won the battleground states of Indiana, Iowa, Ohio, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Virginia, North Carolina, Florida, Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico, New Hampshire, and the list goes on. And looking at the state of Georgia, despite all of those states going blue, Georgia couldn't shift. Georgia could not get there. In fact, it voted for John McCain more than it voted for Donald Trump in the 2016 election. Going back to that original point of the consistent downward trend for the GOP. In 2010, Republicans won by 10. That was a red wave year. You might expect that. 2012, Mitt Romney wins by 7.8. The Senate election two years later in a red wave year, this is where it got a little bit tricky. David Perdue, while not the incumbent, was still a popular challenger, uh, not challenger, popular candidate for the open race and won by 7.7%. In the governor's race, that was won by 7.8%. But keep in mind, this is a red wave. Why are you performing just as well as you did on the presidential ballot when Barack Obama is down 13 points nationally? That's a huge red flag. Fast forward to the 2016 presidential election. Donald Trump only wins the state by 5.1%. Fast forward two years later, in a blue wave year, the governor election only goes to Brian Kemp by 1.4%. 
Then, two years later, the 2020 presidential election goes to the Democrats by 0.1, and the Senate elections two months later go to the Democrats by one and two points. So seeing that significant trend, you go from Republican, 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 etc., and then boom, a Democrat pops in, and then two more pop in. And then 2022 rolls around, and who knows what happens in that governor election with a hotly contested GOP primary. I mean, just so much n negativity is happening here for the Republican Party in the state of Georgia, and it's very consistent with the trend that we actually see in the state of Virginia. Now, I got this graph from uh, this uh, user on Twitter, and I'm going to put them here to credit them for the graph that I'm deciding to show you guys right now. And they pretty much compared Virginia and Georgia uh, next to each other when it came down to the margin relative to the popular vote over the 21st century. You go from 2000 through 2020. Now, seeing the changes here uh, in popular vote as the years progress, you can see that they start to inch up together. They move upwards towards the Democratic Party. They come closer and closer to the popular vote margin, which, as we know now, seems to be skewed heavier in favor of the Democratic Party. Pretty consistently, in fact, in the 21st century, Democrats have won the popular vote every single time except for once, and that was the 2004 election. So despite the Republican Party having three presidential election victories, they only won the popular vote one time. So as you get closer to this popular vote margin, meaning a Biden victory, a Clinton victory, a double Obama victory, sure there was a Bush victory in 2004, but then there was a Gore victory in 2000. Uh, so seeing that uh, consistency and seeing that trend time and time and time and time again, I mean, looking at the very similar pathway, just give it 10 years, and Georgia is right where Virginia is now. And Virginia might be redder or it could actually be bluer. Who knows if they hit their ceiling in the 2020 election? Only time will tell. But my point here is that there are so many similarities between what happened in the state of Virginia and what is happening right now with the state of Georgia. If you look at the presidential map, the good thing about this tool, and the link is right here for you guys to use it, is a very informative tool and absolutely revolutionary. I mean, completely changed the way that I make a lot of these videos, and I'm super grateful that it's there. But besides the website itself, and actually getting to the substance of the video, Virginia and Georgia, you can see, over time have changed pretty dramatically. From the 2000 election year, Virginia has shifted towards the left by 18 points, and Georgia by 12 points. If you look at some of the earlier shifts, now, not necessarily 1996, 1992, there were times when the GOP had a, str a stronger grip in the state of Georgia. But I would actually move to uh, disregard what we saw before the 21st century. Uh, coincidentally or not, the 21st century was a marking point where the uh, a breaking point for the Democratic Party, uh, the Democratic Party in many of these competitive states, or at least at the time more competitive. When you look at the previous elections before the 21st century, I mean, Democrats routinely were solid in states such as West Virginia. I mean, when you look at it very briefly, uh, did it go to the GOP? And it was pretty consistent for the Democratic Party. I mean, election after election, Democrats were able to hold on to the state of West Virginia. Even in 1980, when Ronald Reagan won numerous states, won 489 electoral votes, one state in that, you know, between Virginia and West Virginia went blue, and it actually was West Virginia, in which Jimmy Carter won it by 4.5%. In 84, Ronald Reagan was only able to win it by 10.5. Keep in mind, Reagan was winning 49 states at this time, and yet West Virginia decided to remain likely red. Then he returned in 1988. Democrats win there. 1992, Democrats win again. Then they also win in 96. So what you see here is that West Virginia and many other states decided to go from being solid blue to solid red, and they have stuck that way ever since. So it is fair to compare Georgia to from the beginning of the century to now, because for whatever reason, coinciding with the start of the 2000s, many of these states have made significant trends towards a certain party and have stuck that way. And that's what's happening in the state of Georgia. You know, what I see here in compared to the 2004 shift is an even better representation of the Virginia and Georgia comparison, because this is the last time a Republican won the popular vote, and this is arguably a pretty good performance, I would say, in the popular vote for the GOP and potentially on the electoral map. But looking at Virginia and Georgia, I mean, they have had 17, you know, 17 points changing towards the left in Georgia and 18 points in the state of Virginia. And as you see it move on and on, you begin to see how as Virginia gets more democratic, of course, it becomes less democratic relative to the 2020 election. But Georgia is consistently there. And even from 2016, Georgia got five points more Democratic. You give it two more elections, and there you have Georgia exactly where Virginia was in the 2020 presidential election. Isn't that something? 
I mean, there is so much to be said about this state's sudden trajectory in favor of the Democratic Party, and I think it is very, very clear at this point in time. Another thing that I really think should have been mind-blowing and boggling, and I'm sure it was to many election uh, forecasters and uh, members of the analytical teams and various uh, political groups, but the state of Georgia in 2016 actually shifted towards the left. I mean, looking at the difference between where it was in 2012 and where it was in 2016, there was actually a pretty notable shift. It was 2.7%, which some people might disregard as inconsequential and not super important. But keep in mind that 2016 was undoubtedly a good year for Republicans. I don't know if it's fair to say a red wave because you didn't see a sudden surge in the Senate or a sudden surge in the House. In fact, Democrats gained six House seats. They gained two Senate seats in this year, but they did win the presidency, they being the Republican Party. Shouldn't have uh, mixed them up together there. But Republicans won the presidency. And with that victory in the presidency, they shifted nearly every state towards the right, at least almost every single major swing state. You saw a state such as Florida flip to the GOP, Iowa, Ohio, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania alone. Those are six states that voted for Obama twice that voted for Trump in the 2016 election, and some of them by extremely large margins. North Carolina got redder, right? Many of these states got redder. Minnesota, even though won by Clinton, got redder. New Hampshire, redder. That's the difference here between 2012 and 2016. But Georgia wasn't like that. Georgia voted for Donald Trump by 5.1%. Keep in mind, again, remember, uh, remember what I told you, 2008, John McCain won by 5.2%. So you have 5.2% in the lowest year for the GOP in the 21st century, and one of their peaks, in fact, their peak in terms of a presidential margin of victory, they win by a lesser margin. Again, some very big red flags here should have been going off for the GOP, and this is just, you know, super perplexing to look at. The fact that many states shifted towards the right, and yet Georgia decided, you know what, I'm going all in for Hillary right? And that doesn't seem to be believable. I mean, it just doesn't make sense that Hillary Clinton, who severely underperformed Obama's performance in many battleground states, was able to improve off of Obama's 2008 loss and 2012 loss. And that paved the way for 2018, where Brian Kemp narrowly wins over Stacey Abrams. I think Democrats are actually happy that Abrams lost in 2018 to a certain extent. They obviously don't agree with what Brian Kemp has done, and this is not to say that they would choose to vote for Brian Kemp again in 2022, but it is to say that Stacey Abrams being out of the governor's office had more time to invest in the Democratic Party's endeavors in 2020-2021, and they ultimately paid off. I don't think Democrats would have done anything differently if they knew that they were able to win control of the U.S. Senate through the state of Georgia had Stacey Abrams lost this governor's race. Of course, it sucks to lose, but she very well uh, could have just withdrawn herself from politics, but she decided not to. And she stuck in, and that's why Democrats won in 2020. She was the primary reason. Not to ignore the trends that were very clearly there, but to say that she expedited the process. And you can see that in the change in support. Going from 2016 at R plus 5 to Democrats winning in the next election is a pretty substantial change. And Georgia Republicans recognize this. That's why they are going so harsh on these new maps. In the brand new map that has been drawn by the Republican Party in the state of Georgia, they have given Democrats five total districts that they can compete in. They're solid in four, and they're competitive in one. In the old map, they were competitive in two, solid in four, and ultimately Democrats were able to win six out of the total 15 seats, sorry, 14 seats in the state of Georgia. Now, looking at the new map, there is no change in terms of uh, congressional representation. There isn't an added or withdrawn seat. But what Republicans did, uh, what they did was decided to shore up one of these districts, the 6th district, and grabbed in this rural area and pulled it in and said, we want your Republican votes. Look at the partisan lead. Republican plus 24, and on the old map, it was Republican plus, actually, it was Democrat plus one. I assumed it was Republican because Tom Price had won there in 2016 by 30 points. Two years later, it ended up going to the Democrats. But the 6th district there went from being Democrat plus 1 to Republican plus 24. Republicans are terrified about what will happen in the state of Georgia. So they gerrymandered the map to prevent Democrats from being able to win the majority of the delegation, the same way that the Virginia Republicans did in 2010 when they had control over the governorship and the state legislature. They took the Virginia, and at the time they did not have control of the Senate, they waited actually, pushed it off to allow their senators to get inaugurated 
in time for 2012. And that was after the 2011 Senate elections that were hugely consequential for Virginia redistricting, but ultimately paid off, I think, for Democrats because they were able to win the majority by the end of the century. Uh, sorry, decade, not century. But what you see here is that between 2010 and 2012, the Virginia Republicans took two lean districts in the state of Virginia. They took, you know, some of these lean districts went from eight to three. In 2012, remaining at 8 to 3, but more solid districts. And then in 2014, they became solid red. The GOP did this for a reason. They took a state that they lost in 2008. They took a state that they lost in 2012. And even on that same ballot, where Obama was winning Virginia, the state of Virginia still elected eight Republicans and just three Democrats. They shored up all the Democrats and gave them solid districts. But by the end of the decade, what you saw was that based off of a forced court order redistrict, the map itself got more beneficial. And there actually is a discussion about an ongoing lawsuit in the state of Georgia. I don't expect things to change, but I do think that it is possible. While Virginia didn't necessarily have uh, the same exact map throughout the entirety of the decade, that at some point the delegation does change because the Atlanta metro area is booming. It is changing dramatically in terms of an increased population. And that is the exact region that consistently shifts towards the left. So Democrats have, uh, while a bit to go, before Georgia actually replicates Virginia in terms of its margins of victory for the Democratic Party. But it seems to be there. The trend and the trajectory of the state just is so clear and so evident that at this point in time, as the next 10 years end up, Georgia could very well be the next Virginia. And if I was to compare it to any state that has had a rapid and sudden change and detract from the GOP in terms of support, that is now a well-known established state that Democrats routinely are competitive and favored in, with a few exceptions, most notably the 2021 governor's race. The state of Virginia, I could not find a better state than that state to compare to the state of Georgia from what we've seen today. And ultimately, I think that this discussion and this prediction that Virginia uh, and Georgia are going to be very similar in 10 years from now, or at least Georgia will be where Virginia is now, is a very fair estimate and one that is backed by a lot of data and a lot of what we've seen over the past just four years alone. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 redistricting election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.